I got dudes in the industry. I just want to sit them down and make them do this and ask them questions. I'm with you, bro. You the smartest dude that ever lived. Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today we're joined by LL Cool J. He's a two-time Grammy award-winning artist, hip-hop trailblazer, and recent inductee to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which really only tells half the story, with decades of TV and film credits as well, from NCIS to Toys to Any Given Sunday. He also founded Rock the Bells, his media company and serious radio channel, which of course celebrates classic hip-hop. LL Cool J, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, man. What's going through your head as you prepare to take on this gauntlet today? I'm terrified, B. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> this is all these hot so I didn't expect all this. There's a lot of different brands, label. I, I, I kind of, I seen the show, but I didn't really like realize the, the you know what I mean? Yeah, well, a the lot scale going on. of it when it meets the you scale, right here. Yeah. Especially me, because this is like exactly what I'm avoiding at the restaurant. <laughs> like, like I'm moving right past this section. Got it, okay. Let's Here do we it. go. All right. That's hot enough, B. <laughs> <laughs> That's hot enough right there. Like, I could go home. <laughs> oh, man. Well, goddamn. Woo! That's stage one? <laughs> That's stage one. We're in for one today. We are. And what's foul is I'm a little hungry, and I'm tempted to go for it a little more, but I'm going I'm yeah. to ease we'll into it. We'll pace it. We'll yeah. pace it. We'll pace it. Okay. So you're just coming off the Grammys where you yeah. introduced and performed in the star-studded tribute to hip-hop's 50th anniversary. Right. As someone who's won multiple Grammys, hosted the show on five different occasions, where did last Sunday's performance rank amongst your most treasured Grammy memories? It's probably... Uh, the most enjoyable, one of the most enjoyable. I, I mean, I've had other moments hosting, just purely hosting that were amazing as well. But as, as an artist, I mean, this was like by far the most fun for me. I mean, being on stage with, with Rakim and Public Enemy and Salt and Pepper and Grandmaster Flash, Millie Mel, Scorp, Raheem. I just want people to know that, you know, for years hip hop has been being served in a brown paper bag, a greasy brown paper bag. I want people to, I wanted it to be served on a silver platter. And, you know, thankfully it was. I was able to, you know, make a huge contribution. Questlove did a wonderful job curating. Jesse did an amazing job producing, you know, getting, making sure the production was right. And, you know, me just sewing things together, making sure things are right and really helping to mold it and make it what it is. And, and I think it turned out to be something real special for hip hop. Shaquanda. She ain't gonna come out and shit. <laughs> she ain't gonna jump out the curtains or nothing. Is she? All right. Yeah, okay. Okay. Still got our feet. Yeah, I'm okay. There we go. I'm okay. There we go. My tongue is like attentive right now. <laughs> You know? <laughs> head uh, on a swivel. Like, yeah, my head is <laughs> My tongue is waiting for an interception right now. Like, you know, when you're on offense, you yeah. got to keep your head on a swivel looking out for interception. Yeah. But if there's an interception, that's how mm -hmm. my tongue feels right now. It's just like, you know. Head alert. My tongue has a chubby. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, it's not all the way there, but it's, you know what I mean? It's ready. <laughs> yeah, it's ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There for you. A little tongue chubby right now. Okay. So when we had Queen Latifah on the show, she reminisced about performing at LA roller rinks turned music venues like Skateland and World on Wheels. Yeah. What role did places like The Rink in North Jersey play in your own hip hop origin story? Oh man, The Rink was incredible. I mean, um, that was one of the first places I ever played at was The Rink. Cause that was back then when we didn't have music videos. So I only had like, I need a beat out with The Rink that, that, that built. That, 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 that. I feel punch drunk right now. Um, it's like, you know That's what I mean? That's the it's show. That's the show. Speed bag in my lips right now. My lips is getting speed bagged. I can't even focus, B. Um, um, yeah, the rink. So I, I, was, I went out there and uh, fuck it, man. I don't know what I'm talking about, B. Whatever. <laughs> whatever it was, whatever I was going to say, it was going to be smart and provocative and introspective, right? 
What do you remember about hearing I Need a Beat for the first time at the game room on Farmers Boulevard? I mean, it was an amazing feeling to, like, imagine if your dream was like a big giant bubble, right? And it was coming towards you and you had the ability to pull it in. And it's your dream. So you have a hand in it and it's your dream. So I'm out there, I'm staring at the, 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 the ground. You know, it had rained earlier that day, but you know, I'm out there and this dude comes up to me and he's like, yo, that's you on the radio. And I remember, I remember staring at the street, the street lights, it was dark. And I was like, yeah, I know, I like that. It's like, I like that. You know, the, 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 the light was glistening like diamonds off the street. It was like, a, it was an unbelievable moment. I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. And if you're right there with me. I am. Are you ready to move on here? Yeah, let's do it. To sauce number three. Let's do it. So this is the Donus Cadejo here. The Donus Cadejo? Mm-hmm. Like, ah, oh, damn, like in Don't Ask Cadejo? <laughs> <laughs> Don't Ask Cadejo. <laughs> <laughs> It's getting hot in here. Getting, get, 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 getting hot in here. <laughs> getting hot in here. <laughs> shot, 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 shot. You know what I mean? God damn, right B. Right there, right Woo. there. Fact or fiction, an animatronic shark's grasp onto your left leg almost caused you to drown on the set of Deep Blue Sea. Thousand percent true. Facts. Hundred percent facts. I was on the set, you know what I mean? I was probably number 479 on the call sheet. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I was, you know, in the middle of a take and uh, lunch. And the guy holding the, you know, the little toe, <laughs> the little joystick, you know, pastrami. You know, and they just, you know, broke, they just bailed on me. And there I was just like, it was like real. <laughs> and they said, oh, and they gave me this little breathing thing, this little breathing apparatus, like something like this, you know, and you blow out and then breathe in. I blew out, breathed in, all water. <gasps> took, took it to another level. But I ended up struggling getting out. And when I got out, climbed out, there was one dude sitting there with a cigarette like. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it happen. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it was cool. Los Calientes Verde. Ooh. God damn. <laughs> Ooh. Going through it. Ooh. <laughs> going back to Cali. <laughs> Cali. <laughs> Caliente, going back to Cali. <laughs> mm. Fuck. <laughs> going back to Caliente. Caliente. <laughs> damn, B. Woo. What are some of the biggest difference in navigating the music industry versus Hollywood? Like, I don't think it's a coincidence that the hip hop icons who've had this enduring, everlasting legacy on the big screen also uh -huh. happen to be some of the most business savvy. Um, discipline equals freedom. You know, the music industry, man, is um, a wonderful business and it can be a wonderful business, but the reality is not many people are very disciplined. You make it to the gold chain, now what? You make it to the diamond neck brace, now what? You know what I'm saying? And so, it's the discipline. And the guys that you see that are successful and the women that you see that are successful, the people that you see that are successful, they're disciplined. Like I always tell my staff and my team, it's like, it's corny and it sounds cheesy, but it's true. Ego is not your amigo. You know what I'm saying? Humility is a superpower. Okay. This right here, Brooklyn Deli, ghost pepper sauce. Yeah, different kind of. Yeah, that motherfucker, that boy. Yeah, yeah. That motherfucker, that boy. That's a step that, up, yeah. Ooh, that shit ain't playing at all, <laughs> no level. That shit. You're that shit, me. Dude, you walk in the house, that shit put you in a headlock. <laughs> fuck, sit the fuck down. I run this. <laughs> I run this shit, B. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Holy mackerel. Yeah. <gasps> Woo! Going in. All right, all cool, Jay. We have a recurring segment on our show called Explain That Gram. We do a deep dive on our guest Instagram, pull interesting pictures that need more context. Okay. So we'll pull the picture up over here on the monitor. You okay. just tell us the bigger story. Okay. What's the origin story behind meeting Rick Rubin for the first time at his NYU dorm room? 14 years old, I was trying to get a record deal. And um, I went, 
you know what I'm saying, to a record store called Record Explosion. I used to go and buy, either buy, or if I had the money, or just rock, copy down the addresses <clears throat> of any song that looked like it was hip hop or was or I knew it was hip hop. So I would either buy them or write them down and send demos out. And I did that for like two years. And I finally bought It's Yours by Tila Rock. It was, um, it had Def Jam Productions, the logo, was on the, on the label, it was Streetwise Party Time and they had the Def Jam logo. I called Rick, I didn't know it was his dorm room at the time, but I used to call him all the time. Um, every day, every day, every day, every day. And um, yo, Rick, you get the tape yet? Nope. Call him the next day, Rick, you get the tape yet? Nope. Rick, you get the tape yet? And finally, Ad Rock from the Beastie Boys, he heard my tape and he played it for Rick and then Rick called me and you know, the rest is history. Here we are, like, you know, Hall of Fames and Grammys and it's crazy, man. First time I met him, I, I said, when I walked in, I was like, oh shit, you Rick? He said, yeah. I said, I thought you was black. He said, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was black, dude. He's like, yo, what's up? It's Rick. I'm like, I thought it was, you know, Rick. I was expecting Frankie Crocker to come out that motherfucker. You know what I mean? You know? <laughs> you know? You know what I mean? I expected, you know, Don Cornelius. <laughs> you know what I mean? I thought Don Cornelius was going to come downstairs, bro. Mushroom mayhem. Mushroom mayhem. Are these mushrooms gonna make all these colors become vivid? Is this a there's what only kind one, of mayhem we talking about? There's only one way to tell, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed, right. you know? <laughs> <laughs> that it will happen. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yep. In it. Ah. Ooh, ah. Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> I, I was the Buster, my inner Buster Rhymes came out just yeah, then. Yeah. Ooh, ha! <laughs> Ooh, Got ha. you on the check. <laughs> God damn, B. It's up my back, it's around my neck. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Woo! This is wow. Yeah. Wow, Mushroom Mayhem, go ahead now. <laughs> go ahead, Mushroom. Oh shit. That's a new rapper for you, Little Mushroom Mayhem. <laughs> little Mushroom Mayhem, yeah, I like that. That sounds like a hit. Get a mullet cut, Little Mushroom Mayhem. <laughs> a little dude with a mullet. Do you remember what felt like your first like big money show? Like, do you remember your first ten thousand dollars show or your first thousand dollars show? Or I mean, the first show for three hundred dollars was big money. Yeah, Are you yeah. kidding me? Like what? What? Yo, listen. Let me tell you something. First of all, I started when I was sixteen. All I wanted at that time was a VCR, a gold chain, and some some sneakers. My first check that I ever got that would, to me was a lot of money was fifty thousand dollars. The first thing I did was buy my mother a car, and then I gave my mother like I don't know ten or eight grand or something, and I took the rest. And I just remember all my shit being gone, and my mother still having the eight grand <laughs> in the car. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> I didn't really understand what happened here. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was just like, what happened? But um. You grow up and you learn. I can get a chicken wing if I need one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm doing okay. I'm blessed. So it's all good. All right. All right. This next one uh -huh. is the dreams of Calypso here. <laughs> In the Shout out to spot. Harry Belafonte. <laughs> Hey, damn. That is so crazy. It's like a like a, an <laughs> aluminum foil rose is blooming in my throat. <laughs> that is hot a aluminum foil rose. Way to put it. A beautiful way to put it. Yo, you know poetic. What I mean? Poetic. Wow. So you signed to Def oh, Jam in 1984. Man, yep. Fuck. Go for it, go for it. <clears throat> oh shit. I don't even like milk like that. He needs your milk. <laughs> <laughs> Any port in a storm. Any port in a storm. Ah, no, I ain't going that far with it. Fuck that. <laughs> mm. Oh, fuck. Wow. What Cardi say? That dangly thing in my throat. <laughs> <laughs> this, this shit hit that yeah, dangly like, thing in your throat, Cardi. This right here. You know, this shit crazy. So you signed to Def Jam in 1984, and you've successfully right. navigated the notoriously treacherous music industry alongside some of the biggest titans in the game. So if you'll humor me, what I want to do is just a thought association game, where <laughs> I hit you with a rap tycoon, and you just give me the first couple of thoughts that come to your mind, okay? okay. Lee or Cohen? Smart. I think he's smart. I think he's, um, he's only going to do what he has to. <laughs> <laughs> 
Love you, Leon. <laughs> He's only going to do what he has to, B. Chris Lady. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant guy. Going too soon. It's my friend. Loved him. Miss him. Ahead of his time. Good guy. Oh, my God. That shit is in the pipes, baby. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Clogged pipes. God damn. Where's your I got dudes in the industry. Attention. I just want to sit them down and make them do this <laughs> and ask them questions. I'm with you, bro. You're the smartest dude that ever lived with this shit. This shit is crazy. Nobody's smarter than you, B, with this shit. What's the name of this one? This is The Bomb Beyond Insanity. The Bomb Beyond Insanity. <laughs> yeah. Probably for the best. Yeah, that was good. That's good. For the first time, a calm in the room. Oh. And I am telling you, <laughs> I'm not going. Yo, this shit here. Yeah. Woo! Yo. Crazy. They must have used military technology to make that <laughs> motherfucker. That shit is crazy. Oh, man. Brother, man. <laughs> I can't sit still. You know I what? I can't sit. Hold on. Don't even sure. talk. Don't interview sure, me. Sure, sure. I'm just going to chill. I'm just going to chill. Ah, oh, you need your milk. Oh, yeah, give me some ice cream. Ah, oh, bringing fuck. it in, bringing it in. Woo. God damn! I'm glad you came with the ice cream. I'm glad you came with the ice cream. Oh, God damn! I don't know. I know. God damn! Oh, oh, God! Woo! Woo! Mm, mm, mm. I'm, I'm starting to cry out this motherfucker. That's the best ice cream in the world. I know. It never hit oh. better. Yo, bro. In moments like this. I know. I know. It's getting hotter. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking, it's increasing. Grows and grows. Bro. Holy shit. <laughs> Yo. You got to be fucking kidding me, bro. Holy fuck. Yeah, just be God careful. damn. Be careful around the eyes. God damn! I know. I know. This is like, I'm damn near like in crackhead mode right now. Like, <laughs> no, oh no, no, oh, no disrespect. This is like, I know, yeah. I feel like it's like some crackhead happen. shit right I know, now. Like, I really, I do feel like anything can happen. This crackhead levels right are ridiculous. This shit is, yo, come on, man. Are you serious? Holy <laughs> fuck! Wow, 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 wow. I know that you're a ice cream connoisseur. Like, what do you think is the goat ice cream flavor? <sighs> Yo, my fucking lips are hot. Mm. Yeah, everything. Everything. Holy mackerel. Depends on the mood. You know, Neapolitan's always a mean. Cookies and cream is good. You know, vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry, you're not going, you know. If you put them them three together. You, you know, Classic. A couple of bananas, some hot fudge <laughs> syrup. You know what I mean? Some of them strawberries. You know what I mean? <laughs> Shit. I <know> what you mean. <laughs> Woo! Love that. You got to love that. <laughs> that was so crazy. It's still hot. Right. And what's really foul about it, it's pin, it's ping ball, it's pinball machine hot. In other words, it's hot over there and it's hot over here. <laughs> it stops over here, it's hot down here. It stops down there, it's hot over here. It's hot up there. It's hot over here, it's hot in the back, it's hot in the front. It like, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's ricocheting. It's, it's ricocheting. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Are you ready to move on to the next one? I'm ready, baby. So this I'm is good, taco man. vibes only. Taco vibes only. Okay. Yo, I'm, 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 uh, yo, I gotta, I'm taking a small, yo, you come on this show, take small bites, baby. <laughs> Don't even think about going hard. There you go. Oh, come on, man. But not like the last one. Not like the last one. What do you mean? That shit is like, it's like fucking episodic at this point. It's episodic television. It's like this is the fucking next episode. It like, you know, it has the recap. Yeah. Then it's the last week <laughs> on BMF. <laughs> but remember, remember that first one. Remember that. Uh, remember the bomb and mm -hmm. how you're feeling. Not, not this one. Not as bad. Not as bad, right? I'm just wondering about like, you know, 
the real damage. The act two, yeah. Oh, bro. Next week's episode. Uh, no, no, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm really concerned about that right now. What does pink cookies in a plastic bag getting crushed by buildings mean? I don't know. I was high when I wrote it. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? I know what you mean. <laughs> I, um, you know, I was, um, I mean, you know, <laughs> I have no idea, bro. I, I don't know, man. High as a motherfucker, man. That shit is just what it is, man. I was on the phone with some girl. She said, what are you doing? I said, I'm just sitting here thinking about pink cookies and a plastic bag getting crushed by buildings. buildings. She said, what? I said, you know what? That's the song. I'll call you back. <laughs> I said, yo, Molly, let's go downstairs. <laughs> Went downstairs and made a record, man. Uh, oh. All right, I'll call Jay. Mm. Ah. No, no, I'll play the, I'll, I'll, I'll go with it. Whoa, look at you. You know, they say tradition is peer pressure from dead people. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> <laughs> never heard this that. One's huh? kinda, no, I never heard that. This one's kind of peer pressure from a living yeah, person, yeah. you know? <laughs> okay, you, you want a little dab on him, huh? All right, oh, oh that, I, did not, uh, I did not mean for yeah, that to happen. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's too much. No, no, That's no, no, too no, no, much. No, no. That's we, too we, much. We're going, we're going. We yeah, yeah. D there, we gonna, that, yeah. yeah we're going. Smart. Yeah, okay. Well, what a run and what a hey. ride. Hey. Cheers. You know, hey, hey. You know what I mean? My Cheers. man. Cheers. Cheers. I know. I can see the face already. I know. I know. Oh my God. And don't worry, because oh. a nice big wind up on this one, okay? We came. We saw. We ate. We conquered. And you know, you're one of hip hop's great ambassadors from the music that shifted the landscape to Rock the Bells, which continues to honor classic hip hop. Mm -hmm. to your most recent Grammy performance, which of course was a toast to the 50th anniversary. Mm -hmm. So to close things out with your brain on fire, <laughs> your mouth ablaze, mm -hmm. how would you best distill what hip hop has meant to you? Like what is your love letter to the genre? Well, I'll tell you like this, first of all, you know, just because of where I grew up and where I was raised, if I wasn't doing hip hop, you know, it'd have been, you know, either the military, bank robbery or drug dealing. One of them three. When I was a little kid, when I was in my 20s, it was about me taking my shirt off and making it about me. Now it's about looking out at the culture and elevating all of these artists and making sure that this culture is celebrated the way it should be and the way I believe it should be. And that's, been, that's my life's mission with Rock the Bells. That's why Rock the Bells is so important to me and is, is, has become the go-to company for all people who, oh, fuck, my mouth is hot. Um, oh God, I can't even get my <laughs> spill. I had the elevator pitch down, bro. It's over. Rock the Bells is hot. Shit. You know what I mean? Listen, just check it out, B. Go to the dot com, check it out. Shit's hot. You know what I mean? We not corny. We not, it ain't dusty as fly. Fuck it. Mike, drop and look at you, LL uh, Cool J, taking on the wings of death uh, and living to tell the tale. Now there's nothing left to do but roll out the red carpet for you. This camera, this camera, this camera. Uh -huh. Let the people know what you have going on in your life. All right, well, right now, um, I have a new album coming out this year, a new record produced by Q-Tip of a tribe called Quest. Rock the Bells as a company, as a culture company. We have content, commerce, and experiences. You know what I'm saying? And we're doing it. So that's what I'm doing. God damn, my mouth was hot. My mouth was hot. My man, appreciate you, bro. I appreciate you, man. Wow, that was crazy, B. <laughs> wow. Holy Crazier shit. than you thought it would be? Are you kidding me? Hell yeah. <laughs> that shit was fucking double straight jackets. Double that shit, straight that jackets. That shit was double straight jackets, man. God damn! Hot Ones fans, breaking news, the three in one boneless bites challenge is back. For a limited time, you can put your taste buds to the test against some of our most iconic flavors. The classic, Los Calientes, and the peak of heat, Apollo. But don't fret Hot Ones fans, even when the three in one challenge leaves the freezer aisle, you can still pick up your favorite flavor of Hot Ones boneless bites. Visit hotoneschallenge.com for more information on products and to find a store near you because it's time to bring the heat home.